So I've been posting a lot about content mode lately and the response that I got from you was overwhelmingly positive. However, last week I found out that I made a mistake in my videos. This video is here to explain what I got wrong, the impact that that mistake might have on your setup and to provide correction. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to improve your setup even more. Let's dive in. So let me start out by saying that I'm sorry for this. I work hard to condense complicated topics into a short period of time so you can just watch, implement and get on with your life. However, the devil is in the details in my line of work and I evidently failed to fact check everything before I publish and I'm just really sorry for this. The best thing that I can do now is to be as open and transparent as possible about it and to guide you towards a possible solution. So what did I get wrong? Well, in my videos, I tell you to use the initialization all pages trigger on your GA4 config tag. And it turns out that is not the best way of implementing consent mode. Let me explain. If I'm gonna draw a little timeline, and uh, let's assume that somebody comes to your site for the very first time, and this is a timeline, and initialization all pages trigger will make sure that GA4 loads as quickly as possible upon entering your site. And that is in line with the documentation. It is a best practice to do it like that. It says it in this uh, article that I will reference below, but it turns out that it is in some cases not the best way of implementing a GA4 after all, especially whenever you say analytics storage is denied by default. So, because that will make sure that GA4 is not being blocked right here because analytic storage is denied by default. A consent banner will pop up after a while and then gives the user like a decision to make, like do you want to deny or accept cookies or maybe even a third button that, that lets you like select different categories. But after a while, a user makes his or her choice and then they say analytic storage is denied or granted. So it might say granted here. Well, I assumed that Google Tags would automatically resend a page view whenever consent was given later on in the page view. And it turns out that that is not true. So in this case, GA4 is only loaded whenever someone clicks to the next page. For instance, from the home page towards the next page. Then GA4 is loaded for the very first time. So to summarize, if you followed my previous instructions and if you have set analytic storage to denied by default and if it, visitors come to your site for the very first time and if they give consent for analytic storage later on in their first page load then ga4 will be only loaded on the second page and the data from the first page load is not being collected in the current setup so why did i tell you to use the initialization all pages trigger on the GA4 config tag. Well, first of all, the GTM documentation itself, when it talks about setting up a Google tag, it tells you to use this trigger. To me, this made a lot of sense because the sooner you load a Google tag, the more accurate your measurement becomes. That's also why you're instructed to put the GTM container code as high in your page as possible because the higher it is, the sooner it will load and the more accurate your measurement becomes. Also, whenever I read something on consent mode, it told me that tags would automatically adjust their behavior. And I just misread this documentation. I also found this comment by Simon Hava from three years ago where he made the same mistake. He, he also says GA4 automatically resends the page view when consent is granted. But he corrected himself one year later and he said that it is a bit outdated. It was written based on either a bug or misreading of the data. And I found this out myself too. I was building a setup for a client last week and I was testing also the consent scenarios and I didn't see any page view coming in even after consent had been given. So that's when I started to realize that I was wrong. So what are the implications of this mistake? Well, they might be serious, depending on your setup. Let's first discuss when this becomes important. Well, this becomes important whenever you have set analytic storage to denied by default. So whenever somebody enters your site, you're not loading GA4. You're actually blocking GA4 right now. If people land on your site for the first time, they give consent later on in that page load. And if they give consent, GA4 is only loaded on the second page that people visit. That means that you miss out on the data from your first visit. Well, what exactly are you missing out on? Well, it turns out 
that you're probably gonna miss your UTM tags because UTM tags are usually detected on the first visit. So that means if you're using UTM tags, those might get lost in this setup. Secondly, you miss your refer because the refer tells you like, okay, where's this person coming from? Is it from Facebook? Is it coming from another site that links to my site? And the refer field is very important to Google Analytics to check and attribute that session to a traffic source. So these two together means that you might lose some traffic source information. Also, because you're only tracking the second page, you do not get the proper landing page in your report because you kind of missed the first page load. So again, in some cases, the implications of this mistake might be actually quite serious because you miss out on some traffic source information and also on some landing page information. So if this is the case for you, I recommend that you watch the next section to see how you can solve this issue. So what should you do? I've divided this part up into two sections. First of all, I want to give you some pointers if you've been following along with my cookie bot video. So if you've watched that, this is what you should do. First of all, we're not going to use the initialization all pages trigger anymore on the GA4 tag because we're going to make a new trigger. Let's look at the cookie banner. So if I accept all cookies, you will find that on accepting cookies, and then if I go back into Tech Assistant, you will find that there's a cookie consent update event in the data layer present. You do not need to understand whatever this means, but what you should do is we're going to use this event to initialize all our Google tags. So I'm going to go into triggers. I'm going to create a new trigger that I'm going to call cookie consent update. I'm going to go into trigger configuration and I'm going to choose the custom event trigger. Under event name, I'm going to paste this in. So cookie underscore consent underscore update. And I want this to fire on all custom events with this name. I'm going to hit save. And this is the trigger that I'm going to use for GA4. So cookie consent update. This is also the trigger that I'm going to use for my meta ads page view tag. And you should also use this for other tags that need consent. For instance, I have Pubic Pro. Just to be sure, I'm going to use cookie consent update here as well. And also for my Matomo setup. This will make sure that J4 and all your other tags are loaded on every page, but also after somebody has granted a consent for analytic storage or ad storage. All right, let's test the setup. And for the sake of this demonstration, I've set all the defaults to the night because that's really where this mistake really applies. Let's see if the setup is working now. So I've removed my cookie banner preferences. So this is the scenario where somebody lands on your site for the first time and hasn't denied or accepted the cookies yet. The tags haven't been fired yet because I haven't made my decision. And if I click allow all, I see that there is a cookie consent update message in the data layer. And here is where all my tags are fired. And if I click onto the next page, I will see cookie consent update there as well. So it will fire on all pages. So let's look also at the scenario where people refuse cookies. So if I'm going into my site, I'm going to refuse cookies. I will also get a cookie consent update message right here. And what you will find is that some tags will be blocked. So for instance, the meta ad tag, my Pubic Pro tag and my Matomo tag. These are being blocked because in my consent overview, I told GTM that analytic storage is required or ad storage is required in case of meta ads. What you also find is that even though consent is denied at this point, that the GA4 config tag is still being fired. This is because GA4 will track anonymous pings whenever somebody will deny analytic storage. So if analytic storage is granted, it will fire and it will track everything that it usually tracks. But if consent is not given, it will still fire, but it will track anonymous pings. I'm planning on making a separate video on this in the future, but the reason that it behaves like this is so that GA4 can model the data afterwards in some cases. I'm planning on making a separate video on that, but I can understand that this is confusing, but this is the behavior that it should have. This is expected behavior. If you do not want this, if you want the GA4 tag to block completely, so if you do not want anonymous pings to load, you will need to go into your GA4 config tag and then say 
require additional consent. And then if you say analytic storage is required, then it will block until analytic storage is present. So let's do this again. I'm going to hit preview. I've already refused cookies. I'm not going to do it again. On cookie consent update, you will find that all the tags are blocked by consent settings right now. So that is a small extra tip for you right there. All right, but what if you've been following along with my other video on consent mode? The video that talks about setting up consent mode with any cookie banner out there. Well, that means that you've been implementing my manual setup, the setup that I actually use a lot on my own clients as well. You've been using this consent mode template by Simo Ahava. Well, in this case, you need to do a little bit more work because I recommend that you do not use the initialization op pages trigger on your J4 config tag here either. I have made a separate video on how to set this up. I will link it down below on how to set this up with meta ads. And as you can see, I already have made a custom trigger GTM consent update for my meta ads pixel. I recommend that you go watch that video and afterwards come back here because we're going to use the same trigger that I made for meta ads. I'm going to use the same trigger on my other tags as well. I'm going to use it on my GA4 config tag. I'm going to use it on my Matomo tag right here. And I'm also going to use it on my Pivik Pro tag. So you want to use this on all your page view tags. So if you have TikTok or Pinterest or whatever platform you're tracking, you want to use this trigger. All right, let's test if this setup is working as well. I've removed my cookie preferences again. I'm going to hit preview. So this is a scenario before any consent has been given. As you can see, I'm firing the GTM consent update right here. And you see that there are a couple of tags already being blocked. If I allow all cookies, there's another GTM consent update being fired. As you can see that my tags are fired now. Let's remove the cookie consent preferences one more time and then refuse consent. Let's see what happens here. Consent has been denied at this point. And as you can see that many tags have been blocked, for instance, the meta ads tags, because there is no ad storage. Matomo and Pivik Pro have been blocked because I have told that they can only be fired after analytic storage has been set. And again, GA4 config tag has been fired and that is expected behavior because we're, even though we're not tracking like everything that we, we would usually track, GA4 will always track anonymous pings in order to be able to use modeling to restore that data. If you do not want that, if you want to block GA4 in all instances, again, just go ahead into your consent overview in the top right corner and then click GA4 config and then say require additional consent and a link storage. I might do a separate video on this in the future on data modeling, etc. All right, that's it for today. Again, my apologies for all the inconvenience. I wish I got this right the first time around. I might re-record my other consent mode videos in the future, but that will take quite a bit of time. So until then, I will reference this video underneath all my other videos and I hope that will clarify and rectify some of the mistakes that I've made in those videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.